हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम मोहन चंद जोशी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फ्राम जामिया मिलिया इस्लामिया टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन मॉड्यूल पल्स फील्ड जल इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस पी एफ जी ई एन एस एप्लीकेशन अंडर द पेपर जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग एंड रिकम्बिनेंट डी एन ए टेक्नोलॉजी पार्ट वन आफ्टर कम्प्लीटिंग दिस मॉड्यूल यू शुड बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड वट एग्जैक्टली इज पल्स फील्ड जल इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस इज वट इज द मेथडोलॉजी and what are the what is the underlying principle for this gel electrophoresis method what are the variants that are available for pulse field gel electrophoresis and lastly what are the application of this technique in research so standard dna gel electrophoresis you all might be familiar with the standard agarose gel that has been run in lab routinely and this standard agarose gel electrophoresis resolves a mixture of dna molecules based upon their length and this is resolved by applying a constant and linear electric field in which the larger dna molecules are migrating slowly while while smaller are quicker and always found in the later at the bottom of the agarose gel what resolves uh, so resolution of these dna fragments depends upon one factor that is how what is the percentage of agarose in that gel so the concentration of agros in the gel determines its pore size and through which the dna resolves for example if you pour a 1% agros gel that means the pore size for that agros gel could be 100 nanometer to 500 nanometer now movement of this dna as we applied a constant and a linear electric field and dna is negatively charged because of his uh, phosphate charge on his backbone dna will move from cathode to a to anode and because there is a pore size which allows the passing of dna molecules it will resolve into a standard band formation and you will see that into the next slide as discussed in previous slide here is the schematics or a representation of standard dna gel electrophoresis so you have a agarose gel in which there are wells where your dna samples is been loaded as you can see in this picture and then these samples are resolved in a linear fashion by putting it under the electric field and as dna is negatively charged as i mentioned earlier also the dna will move toward the anode and based upon the length of the dna you can resolve these ones into a band as you can see in this picture the long frog fragments will take a longer time to resolve and will be slow in migrating through the agarose pore or agarose gel matrix while the smaller fragments will be faster therefore the band pattern will be something like this where that in which the long fragments will be on top and then the shorter fragment will be at the bottom so why psg is needed what is the use of pulse field electrophoresis as you have learned from the pre, uh, previous slide that dna the routinely used agarose gel electrophoresis allows us to relay, uh, to resolve a mixture of dna molecules but if in that dna mixture we have dna molecules which are larger than 20 kb they are often either stuck into the well or will run as a single band because then after that they don't resolve they diffuse together or they stick and and make a single band so in order to resolve this large dna fragment david and charles in 1984 developed a technology or methodology in which the instead of providing a constant volt voltage gradient to resolve these molecules they actually altered the voltage gradient and that's that technique later on became uh, as pulse field electrophoresis so in this technique instead of applying a constant and a linear electric field they actually altered the voltage gradient which allows the uh, dna to enter into agarose gel through the uh, in the pore and get resolved what the fundamental principle of pulse field electrophoresis is the resolution of large dna molecule is achieved by applying an electric field to a gel matrix that periodically changes instead of having a constant electric field we'll have periodically changing electric field not only the electric field is changed but also the direction of the electric field is also changed 
So instead of having a constant one direction electric field imposed or applied onto the DNA molecules, the direction is also changed. In this method also, large DNA molecules take longer time to align or to resolve when field is applied in such a way, while smaller ones manage to run or resolve faster compared to the long, larger one. Therefore, the band pattern is very similar to what we see in a standard gel electrophoresis. That larger band will be on the top and the smaller band will be running at the bottom. Here are the schematics of pulse field gel electrophoresis in terms of how it you can visualize it, how pulse field electrophoresis is resolving a DNA molecule. In this box, what you see, there are two directions in which the electric field is applied and periodically switched. They are perpendicular to each other. So at very first pulse, 0 0.16 second, DNA is aligning toward the electric field. But again, when the pulse is switched, as you can see, 0 0.23 second, DNA starts moving in other direction. And once this entire cycle is carried out over and over for a long duration of time, the large DNA molecule and the small DNA molecules are resolved. Large DNA molecules take longer time to get aligned with the electric field while the smaller ones sneak through pretty quickly. So pulse field electrophoresis has many variants over the years. It is not that pulse field electrophoresis comprises of a single model or single direction or single way to resolve the DNA molecules. Over the period of time it has evolved. So one of the variant of uh, pulse field electrophoresis is orthogonal field alternative gel electrophoresis, OFAGE. In this, the electric field is applied from an angle which is orthogonal or kind of diagonally opposite to each other as you can see in the way electrodes are placed. So the gel is placed and these two electrodes, as you can see, positive and negative, anode and cathode are placed diagonally opposite to each other. And you can see the resolution pattern also. We can resolve the band. The larger fragments are on top, the lower fragments are on the bottom. However, in this method, the DNA is not resolved in a straight line. It is slightly, as you can see in this case, because the way uh, is, is slightly tilted, because the way the electric field is applied, so the DNA is tend to become, a migration is not uh, linear and is kind of squished. Another variant of pulse field electrophoresis is field inversion gel electrophoresis, FIG, in which the orientation of electric field is switched by 180 degree. Now, in this case, the electric field direction is absolute is inversed uh, periodically and we have the pulse duration between this switching is not even, is uneven. Therefore, the migration, the net migration of DNA is in say, one direction. This kind of pulse uh, FIG or this kind of pulse field gel electrophoresis can be performed in a standard gel DNA gel electrophoresis apparatus. However, we need a additional pulse controller which can not only switch but can also control the pulse timing of the electric field. Another variant of pulse field electrophoresis is transverse alternating field electrophoresis. In this electrophoresis, electrodes are mounted at the vertical orientation of the either side of the gel and the electric field is switched. In this method, we can resolve DNA mixture and larger bands, larger DNA molecules will be slow in moving compared to the smaller ones. But the disadvantage with this technique is that because we are uh, applying electric field from a vertical orientation, the resolved bands are usually squished and are not well resolved as compared to the previous two methods. Another variant of pulse field electrophoresis is rotating field gel electrophoresis, ROFE. And in this method, anodes and cathodes are carried out by a rotor that can be turned around the stationary gel. So you have a gel on which the electric field is constantly rotated. In this, we require an additional set of electrodes to stabilize the overall electric field that is generated between anode and cathode. Another variant and the most famous variant of pulse field electrophoresis today is clamped homogeneous electric fields, that is CHEF. This is a leading PFG technique that is used to resolve wide range of DNA molecules and was developed by Shu et al. in 1988. In this, the underlying principle is using control 
clamped electrophoresis which generates homogeneous electric field. This allows us applying electric field from various angles which could vary from 0 degree, 60 degree, 120 degree and would allow resolution of smaller as well as very large DNA molecules with very great efficiency. Clamped homogeneous electric fields. Chef, this technology is recently been used and it's very common nowadays because of its application. It has a wide application. So what is the principle in this technology is that there are three direction through which the voltage is applied. One is at the center axis. Next is a 60 degree clockwise to the center axis and third is 60 degree anti-clockwise to the central direction. However, the degree of the angle of this uh, voltage gradient varies from application to application. Chef allows you to change the degree of uh, that, that angle and it could be 20, 30, 60, 90 or 120 depending upon your application because Chef also allows the manipulation in pulse time, field strength, amount of field strength that you want to apply as well as angle as I just mentioned and these all factors in combination will help you resolve the larger DNA molecules from the smaller one and that's what makes this chef much more um, applicable in various, um, it, it has a diverse range of applications. Also pulse time in chef is not cons kept constant it's actually uh, uh, it's kept equal in all directions suppose we have a uh, voltage gradient coming from three directions so it's always kept same so that the net migration is toward uh, is, is results in a net forward migration also resolution by this technology by pfg and in this chef usually takes 10 to 24 hours uh, compared to a normal electrophoresis which completes in one or two hours but this longer duration results in better separation and also uh, results due to a constant switching in the uh, voltage gradient. In this slide we explain the direction of the electric field in the chef PFG op apparatus that are being used and as you can see there are a contour map electrode placed all around the gel and we have a situation where we can change the angle as I mentioned earlier also as well as the direction of the electric field. In the Chef PFG based system as you can see there are electrodes which are placed and can be used to apply electric field at an angle of plus 60 and minus 60. So that means counterclockwise in 60 degree and clockwise 60 degree angle we can induce electric field and also we have a linear straight which is a zero degree electric field that is applied. Now in this chef method we can also have a wide range it is not limited to 60 degree angle this is shown only for representation here but the degree and the angle of electric field can be changed it could be 60, 30, 90, 120 degree also depending upon the application and the sample that has been used to resolve. So overview of pulse field gelato uh, gel electrophoresis methodology. So how pulse field gel electrophoresis is used to generate a pulse field pattern for a DNA molecule. Here is example for a bacterial cell and how the bacterial DNA is visualized on a pulse field. So very first step is that we have a plate where we have a single colony. We take the single colony and we grow them overnight to make a saturated culture. Now the saturated culture is diluted in such a way that there are just enough amount of the cell in the buffer suspension. This buffer suspension is mixed with a molten agarose which is very specific agarose for pulse field electrophoresis. Now these plugs are prepared which are made. Now these plugs will have bacteria embedded into these agarose. Within these agarose plugs we will carry out specific reaction so that the DNA, the bacterial cell wall is removed and the DNA is exposed which is further digested by a restriction enzyme which we desired for and then these plugs are put into the wells of the pulse field electrophoresis gel. 
it is very important in this particular methodology that agarose plugs are made with enough amount of the cell as well as they these plugs are handled properly and the, these plugs are made so that the dna is not sheared by doing this we are kind of we protect our bacterial genomic dna from having any external dna smearing or dna damage and as you can see shown in this picture we'll have each cell will have its own dna which will remain embedded in this agarose but the outer cell wall and inner membrane of this bacteria will be dissolved by putting these plugs into proteinase k and different other detergents and after that these plugs will be put into agarose uh, into pulse filix over the gel gel and by using a specific pulse time depending upon the size and the resolution that we are looking at we can resolve these into a band and this entire process takes up to uh, from 16 to 24 hours the major application of pulse field electrophoresis which has been there for quite some time though now availability of high throughput dna sequencing as well as other approaches has undermined the application of pulse field electrophoresis in lot many regards however pulse field electrophoresis is still a very robust technique for several applications few are mentioned in this slides in this slide as well as in upcoming slides one of the major usage of pulse field electrophoresis has been in uh, subtyping of clinical isolates where different isolate of same bacterial species that has been isolated from different places can be subtyped and look and uh, we can compare what percentage similarities were there in between two clinical isolate for example in this graph which is taken from one of the studies which are published in 2005 as you can see there are three different isolates or clinical groups that have been uh, um, resolved in a pulse field electrophoresis on the uh, left hand side you can see the the parameter on the top showing the percentage homology so if two uh, clinic isolates are absolutely same that means having a hundred percent similarity you will see the dendrogram on the left side explaining that which matches with the dna band pattern what we see um, via pulse field electrophoresis so using pulse field electrophoresis we can figure out which clinical isolates are identical and which are modified by what percentage also so we can figure out how much difference between two different clinical isolates is there using this technique Another application of pulse field electrophoresis is in food quality and control. In this application or in this method, we can figure out whether food, processed food or the stored food is contaminated with certain pathogens or bacteria or not. In order to do that, we take our food sample, isolate the DNA from it, and now by using specific restriction enzyme sites or restriction endonuclease, we digest our DNA and run it on a pulse field electrophoresis from a fresh and a non-contaminated sample we know the band pattern um, by pulse field electrophoresis when we digest it with specific enzyme in case there is a contamination from any other bacteria or any other harmful bacteria we will see there is a band pattern which has changed and as you can see in this uh, picture on the left you can see there is a bacterial species or the dna molecule from some other species therefore using this technique we can figure out whether our food sample is contaminated or not. Another application of pulse field electrophoresis is in cancer research, which is most commonly used nowadays, is to understand whether the cell, uh, whether there is a DNA damage that happened inside the cell or not. And also, this technique can be used to, uh, to determine whether the DNA damage has been repaired or not. And this is an example which we have picked, from, picked up from a study which was carried out in 2005. As you can see in the control lane, the, all the entire DNA is stuck into the well, suggesting that DNA is not damaged, it's entirely circular, therefore it cannot migrate through the gel. But in condition 1 to 5, where we use different kind of DNA damaging agent and see, and in that case we see that DNA is now been able to get into the gel and making a smear. That shows that there is a DNA damage, therefore these small fragments can pass through or can migrate into the gel. By estimating the quantity of the DNA damage, 
uh, by looking at the um, amount of DNA that has migrated through gel, we can figure out the percentage of cell that has been damaged. Similarly, if the DNA is repaired and then these smears are disappeared and we see entire DNA molecule back into the lane, it also suggests that the sample has been repaired. One of the another application of pulse phage electrophoresis is in cancer research again and it's about uh, determining the apoptosis assay. As I mentioned in previous slide, it can also look at the DNA damage uh, by um, looking at smearing of DNA and in a similar way in apoptosis also which results in DNA lysis. What we see as you can see in this gel which is uh, a data from a 2012 study where we can see in a control slide the chromosomal DNA remains stuck into the well while in three conditions where uh, the apoptosis is induced what we see the DNA is damaged and has migrated out of the well resulted in a smearing also. And the corresponding cell line picture is shown in the second panel where in control cells you see a healthy round big cells but in apoptotic cells you see cell, there is cell damage uh, then their cells are shrinked and cells are smaller. So using this technology we can, uh, we can uh, determine whether cells are undergoing apoptosis as well as cells are experiencing any DNA damage or not. And as I mentioned in previous slide also DNA damage and repair can be also seen using this technology. So students, let's now summarize what we have learned in this module. The standard DNA gel electrophoresis which we standard use in the lab is, is enables us to resolve DNA fragment up to 15 kb. We can see the nice band, the larger molecules are remain on the, on the upside, uh, remain close to the well while the smaller molecules migrate depending upon their length. But if the size of the DNA is more than 15 kb, we see either they are diffused together in a single band or they remain stuck into the, into the well. So in order to resolve these larger molecules which has a wider application, a pulse field gel electrophoresis technology allows us to resolve these larger DNA molecules and they can be up to a million base pairs. And what is the underlying principle of pulse field electrophoresis is instead of having a constant and linear voltage gradient, we can fluctuate uh, the voltage gradient not only in terms of its timing but also in terms of its angle that we are providing in. And the most commonly used pulse field electrophoresis variant is Chef and this utilizes a contour clamped uh, electrophoresis which generate a homogeneous electric field, electric field and also by switching uh, its angles it has a wider applica application also. Chef also allows to manipulate the pulse timing which is very critical in terms of the migration of different uh, DNA fragment also the field strength and also the pulse angle it has a wide variety of angle that you can use and also these three parameters are very important in terms of resolution of different DNA fragments. Pulse field in principle has a various application biological application though the rapid use of uh, high throughput sequencing approaches has uh, taken over certain application of PFG but still PFG remains a very valuable tool to quantify DNA damage and repair as, as well as in uh, subtyping of clinical isolate. So I hope that by the end of this uh, module you have learned uh, in detail about uh, pulse field electrophoresis and its application. Thank you.